Daily Bible Time. Good morning. It is Dominic Steele and it is Friday the 19th of May and we have locked in a date for the funeral for John Yates at uh, 1 p.m. next Wednesday at Village Church. John, the um, well, the longest term member of our church. Um, Kath and I have been there since 2022 in January, but John first started coming in 1997 and he died last Tuesday and uh, we will be remembering him and celebrating his life on Wednesday next week. Now, big moment in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40 in the book of Isaiah. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been, been completed, that her sin has been paid for, and that she's received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now, comfort, comfort my people. It's a directive from the Lord to Isaiah. Um, it's a recommissioning of Isaiah for this new phase of his ministry. And really, chapter 40 marks a massive logic break in the book of Isaiah. Let me unpack it to you from, um, from Barry Webb's notes in his commentary. He says, you need to pause between chapter 39 and 40 to reflect on the probable course of Isaiah's life in these later years. The last time that Isaiah was engaged in public ministry was 701 BC, which was chapter 37. He would have been 69 years old. By the time Hezekiah died, three years later, he would have been 72. It's likely, though, that he lived several years more after this. Tradition has it that he died a martyr during the reign of Manasseh, Hezekiah's son. And um, the suggestion is that the person who is spoken of as being sawn in two in Hebrews 11 may have been Isaiah. At the very least, we can be sure that he lived some years after his public preaching ministry had come to an end. What did he do? Well, um, back in 712 BC, 20 years before his death, he could see that the Babylonian exile was coming. Chapter 39, verses 5 to 7, there's a reference there. It must have weighed heavily on him, but as Webb points out, as far as we know, he did not enlarge on it in his preaching. For most of the following 15 years, the more immediate Assyrian crisis demanded his attention and with the accession of Manasseh and the fierce repression that came with it, it pretty much would have been impossible for Isaiah to preach at all. The nation and its leaders weren't willing to listen. It would only be after they had reaped the full consequences of their apostasy that they would become teachable again and that a word would be needed, but not one of judgment, but one of restoration. And so hence the instruction to go comfort the people of God. It's likely, therefore, says Webb, as the movement from chapter 39, verses 5 to 7, to 40, verses 1 to 11 implies, that the, in the latter part of his life, Isaiah is called to this new task to comfort God's people in words that the disciples would cherish and preserve in the dark days ahead, until Israel was at last ready to hear them. Now, what I found lovely to reflect on was in these opening verses of Isaiah 40, it's like an overture to a great musical. Then this is like Webb's line. All the major themes that the following chapters will develop so powerfully get their first treatment here. Atonement, verse one. Comfort, comfort my people. Speak tenderly, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed that her sin has been paid for, that she's received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Verse 2, the way of the Lord, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for your God. Verse 3, the glory for the Lord, every valley raised up, every mountain hill made low, the rough ground become level, the rugged places are plain, the glory of the Lord, there it is, the glory of the Lord, verse 5, be revealed, and all the people will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Web notes, the first thing that we hear is three striking, stirring commands. Comfort, speak, proclaim, verses one and two. The tone is urgent, but it's not clear at this point to whom these verses are directed. And so I'm thinking, who is it? And then you get um, a voice says, verse six, cry out. And I said, 
what shall I cry? And at last somebody speaks, what shall I cry? He's not so much volunteering as he is the one to whom the speaker was thinking all the time. These are his prophetic credentials. He has stood in God's counsel. He has heard God calling him and he will now take up. Now, that person is the prophet Isaiah. And what we're about to do is we're about to see, well, he's been given the assignment to go comfort the people, them having been under the judgment. And we're going to go see that comfort play out in the remaining chapters of the book of Isaiah. There's the introduction. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this. We thank you for this insight, this helpful insight to understand the structure of what's going on in Isaiah. And we pray that we might revel in the comfort that the prophet Isaiah gives to the people of God back then and what is relevant to us today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us, Daily Bible Time. See you tomorrow morning. God bless.